I wanted to say something about Clifford Hugh Docker, who is of local interest because he taught at Tufts, the topologist, and then later moved to England. Interesting mathematician who worked on various different things, which are related to some topics I was thinking about this week. One of them was a computation about knots. So if you look at the knot, a closed curve in space, then this is uh, actually a problem for finite mathematics because you can just use finite data to describe a knot. Actually, this is the knot I was working on for a computation. I wanted to see what happens with the relation of the Betty numbers of the background space, the Betty numbers of the curve, and of course that's a circle, and the Betty number of the complement. And somehow you could think, okay, that may, might depend on the knot. This was a, a setup I could actually do in a five times 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 five grid. And in order to do this computation, uh, I needed a product, Cartesian product. Also for calculus, you need a product. You need to work in two-dimensional space, three-dimensional space, and you want to do everything we teach in multivariable calculus. We want to deal with curves, we want to deal with surfaces, we want to deal with uh, the products, of course, that's just the Descartes idea of coordinates. We want to uh, have quotients, we want to take quotient, arbitrary quotients, we want to take gluing, we want to glue things together, we want to have this construction like for manifolds or uh, schemes, and we want to have a notion of calculus, we want to have diff broad curve, which comes in when you compute cohomology, we want to have a notion of sphere, we want to have deformations like homotopy, we want to have uh, uh, homeomorphisms, we want also to be able to add and multiply spaces. So the multiplication, of course, is just a Cartesian product. The addition is this, this joint union, which is the co-product. And then we have a one, which is the one point space, and the zero, which is the empty space. So we have a nice arithmetic also. And then we have a cohomology, which is compatible with this arithmetic. So that the, example, the Euler characteristic of the product is the product of the Euler characteristics. And cohomology works like Kunet. The gluing should also work like Maya Vitoris, and there should be some basic theorems. Most of these things I have worked on in the context of graphs, where we have simplicity complexes of graphs. And for the product, I just took the barycentric refinement of the Cartesian product, because I wanted to have graphs, so I wanted to have simplicity complexes. So everything actually works very nicely in this discrete setup, and the proofs become much, much simpler than uh, proofs which you have in the in the continuum, especially, say, uh, gauss bonnet You deal with notions like curvature, you want to add up curvature, you want to get the Euler characteristic, or you want to add up indices, or you want to add up uh, fixed point indices for a, a fixed point theorems, or a SAR theorem, that's very important when you have a level surface, you want to have that this level surface is most of the time uh, manifold again, if the background space is a manifold. So that's, uh, these are all things which actually work very, very well in finite geometries. What is new, kind of my point of view has changed a little bit because I really, especially for computation purposes, this would have been too difficult to do in the barycentric refinement. So I actually worked here now just in the delta sets. So. If you take a Cartesian product of two spaces, like here we have the five-point space and the five-point space, this is a two-dimensional plane, and then we don't want to have a kind of look at all the uh, subsets. We don't want to take the product graph, for example. The product graph is too large, Shannon graph, or we won't, don't want to have the scanley raisner which is also too heavy. We want to have here just uh, 25 elements. When we take two dimensions, three dimensions, I want to have 125 elements only, 125 sets to work with. And then uh, we can work with that and we can form a subset. We have a notion of a closed 
So we have a topology and we have a notion of a complement which is open and for both parts we have a chronology that was kind of the whole thing from this semester and uh, the, uh, we have this uh, fusion inequality which you kind of see here in this example computed of course a three sphere has a one zero zero one then it has one sphere inside the three sphere that's on, and then the, what happened with the complement is zero zero one one, so that this interface homology is zero one one zero. And so what I'm interested in is not only in the numbers, these petty numbers, but also in the homology classes. What happens when I join this knot with its surrounding? What happens is the one form in the knot disappears, of course, because there is no one form in the space, no harmonic one form in the space, and then there is a, also a, a Merges with the two, two form in the uh, complement open, open space. So this is quite uh, nice, and actually it worked. So I could compute these things, and just in relation with this uh, mathematician Docker. So what you do is did here, and I I went here right, and then up. So there was a first crossing, first crossing uh, I label one, then the second crossing two, third crossing, fourth crossing. The fifth crossing you are going in at, at the place where you have already been and so on so there will be two n in this case eight crossings and whenever you are crossing above and it's an even number then you make it make it a negative number so in this case one and minus six are paired minus two five three minus eight and minus four seven because here uh, we are going over a bridge and then you can just disregard the first part and you just take these numbers. This is called the dark uh, this less weight uh, notation. And uh, it is uh, kind of interesting because it allows you to estimate, say, how many knots there are with a certain number of, of crossings. Or you have n men and n, n women and you want to put them on a table and you don't want two men together. So that's what happens here. Then you have, this is called the menage problem. And there's an explicit formula for that. You can just see how many how many ways can you place the man, which is two times two to the n. And then you look how many places, how many ways can you then place the women using inclusion exclusion. And uh, there is an explicit formula for that. So there's an explicit formula for the an upper bound for the number of knots you have with n uh, crossings. But I'm actually interested also whether maybe these cohomology classes can do something. For example, you can take this cohomology class and this cohomology class, and these are the kind of this interaction cohomology class, and you can take the cup product of them. So this is a, a one form, this is a two form, this gives us a three form, this should be on the interaction part of this. And the interact where the knot interacts with his neighborhood, this should be a volume form, mu multiple of the volume form. Maybe there's an interesting number coming out of this. I was also interested in when I take the knot and I take the open neighborhood, which is the smallest open set which contains the knot, I call this UK, and I can co also compute the cohomologies of UK and its complement, which is a closed set. In this case, the interaction cohomology was the same, but in general, it's not true. So if you take a, a general kind of simplicity complex of you know, delta set, and you take a, a, a closed set in it, and then you look at the question you have here a relation between k and u or you can take the neighborhood of k which is uk and you can look at the complement which is close and you can look at the, the relation between these two interaction homologies and in general it's it's different already kind of for a circle bounding uh, disk it's it's different but it's kind of an interesting questions which you which which come up when you look at closed manifolds inside another manifold and you look at this homology of the manifold and the homology of the complement. The second thing where a docker uh, kind of appeared uh, is uh, I actually just stumbled upon it because I was looking at knots and I saw this docker this little weight uh, notation and then I kind of was interested what uh, docker did. Uh, otherwise he was also working on things which I'm interested in uh, you know, to topological data analysis deals with, you know, have a, you have a space like a manifold and you have finitely many points. This is kind of a quantum approach to the finite approach to this. And you, you look at the simplicity complex. 
look at different, for example, look at the points which have a distance smaller than some Planck constant and you, you take this as your Doris Rips complex and uh, then you can uh, look what happens with the cohomology of this. Does this cohomology agree with the cohomology of the manifold? And of course it does if the set is fine enough. There's theorems about this and uh, in this case I was actually interested in the case in this case because these are very interesting objects. What happens is every unit sphere is either contractible or uh, a d minus one dimensional sphere. So these are and if you can axiomatize this, it's very interesting. So they are kind of almost manifolds. And so they have the homotopy type of a manifold. And you can remove the ones which are, which have a, which have a, a contractible unit sphere. And then you get to uh, something which looks like a manifold. Now, uh, Docker, what Docker did was something uh, different. He was looking at more general framework. So if you look at two finite sets, so these are not simplicity complex, just finite sets, like for example, pairs of points here, and then you have a relation, it could be kind of just telling that the points are close enough, but this doesn't have to be a symmetric relation, this can be an arbitrary relation. Actually, in a symmetric relation, it's kind of this setup is the same than here, but you can look at the, also the transpose relation, and what uh, Docker essentially proved is that this uh, Docker complex and its uh, transpose, uh, they are homotopic. Talks about this in different words. That's essentially what it boils down to. But it's an interesting framework and actually something I want to work a little bit more on, especially in that, uh, in that context of finite uh, geometries, which are not, where we are not necessarily in the manifold case. But the manifold case is something very interesting, especially I'm teaching again multivariable calculus this summer. So you can ask yourself, how do you do, you know, how do you model a plane? How do you model space? What is the notion of a graph, right? So I want to have that, you want to have this also as an object in your space or surfaces, level surfaces, or parameterized the images of some parameterizations of some maps and you want to uh, glue things together for manifolds, you want derivatives, that's the uh, main part of multivariable calculus, that you deal with gradient, curl, divergence in three dimensions, and uh, you want to have notions of spheres. In a manifold, every unit sphere should be a sphere, and we can axiomatize that what a sphere is. A sphere is a manifold where every where we can take away a point, such that uh, g minus this, the, the neighborhood of this, point is a contractible space. This works very well. We want also to have some uh, basic theorems. Uh, this actually is not part of multivariable calculus. It's differential geometry or uh, topology or algebraic geometry or algebraic topology. So there are quite a few things here which, which come together. Look at the set of finite sets. This is a nice mathematical object called the topos where you can essentially kind of what this list tells what you can do essentially you can do anything you want you can take products you can take graphs you can take uh, quotients you can glue things together and uh, you have derivatives that's kind of built in also in this notion of delta set delta set is a very very natural thing generalization of synthesia complexes also a finite set of sets so there are there are, there are sets of dimension zero, one, two, three, and so on, and there are face maps, and uh, this is all uh, very nice because it's a it's a pre sheaf and so uh, topos. So it's a very nice mathematical object, and it's all finite, uh, all finite uh, geometry. Clifford uh, Docker, by the way, had, uh, was married to Yael Naim, who is theorist worked on agogic theorems. So that's it for today.